Welcome back! In this video we are going to take a look at Windows Admin Center. This is a uh, somewhat new way of managing Windows servers and we are going to see what it is, how to install it and how to use it to do some basic management tasks that we saw in the last videos also. So a short introduction first. Windows Admin Center is a browser-based management tool for your Windows servers. With this tool, you can manage most of the basic things related to a Windows server. You can access the file system, the registry, schedule tasks and so on. This is meant to help you manage your servers without opening MMC and Server Manager. Because as you know, we, if you want to do different tasks, you have to open different MMC consoles. It's much better to use only one thing to manage all aspects of a server. The management is done through WinRM with PowerShell Remoting and WMI. Now some key points that I think are worth mentioning. Uh, Windows Admin Center contains most of the tools you use to manage servers, but not the tools that you know. They are recreated for a browser experience to do the same things that you would do with your old tools. Just keep in mind that you don't have everything available in Admin Center. Admin Center is extensible, so if the included tools are not enough, you may be able to find something useful on the web, or you could program your own extensions. One good point is that it's very easy to install and also very fast, and it can also manage hyperconverged clusters, failover clusters, containers and virtual machines that are on Hyper-V servers. Also one thing that is not on this slide but I want to mention is the cost of Admin Center. If you have a Windows Server or a Windows 10 license, then go ahead and use it because it's free. Let's go over the install options very quick. Firstly, Windows Admin Center can be installed in two modes. Desktop mode. In this mode, you install Admin Center on a computer, only on Windows 10. Then use your browser, which is not Internet Explorer, to access this website and manage your servers. The other way, the other mode actually, is the gateway mode. In this mode, you install Admin Center on a server and use that server or another computer with a supported browser to access the website and manage your infrastructure. Now, the four options you see on the screen are ways that you could use Admin Center. The local client one is the only one that pertains to the desktop mode. So you install Admin Center on Windows 10, you use Edge or Chrome or another browser, access localhost and manage your servers. Then the managed servers option is you install Admin Center on a server, but that server might be also maybe a file server or a web server. It doesn't have to be just for Admin Center. You access that uh, server's Admin Center installation and you manage it along with your other infrastructure servers. The Gateway Server option so is a little different. You install Admin Center on a server that only is an Admin Center server. And then from that server you can control your infrastructure. And the last uh, option is the failover cluster way. 
it's similar to the gateway server option. You install the admin center website on a failover cluster, you connect to it and then manage your infrastructure. So for installing it, just go to the link and get admin center. Currently, the general available version is 1904. In case you are watching this video a little later, please uh, yeah, make sure that you install the latest one. And the installation mode we will use in this video is the local client one. So make sure before you go on that you have a Windows 10 installed and uh, configured as a domain member. Okay, so I'm logged on on my Windows 10 machine. I have joined it to our test domain and it's ready to host our admin center installation. If you have downloaded admin center, just double click on the MSI and it will start installing. Let's accept. Since we don't have internet access, this doesn't matter. Ok, now we can specify a port, but I will leave the default one. And uh, we can let this checkbox like this. And I'll create also a desktop shortcut for the website. Great, so now admin center is installed. Let's click finish. And you can see the shortcut on your desktop. And you also have it in your start menu. Let's open it. And now we can make the initial setup of admin center. Click next. Finish. And you can see first the only connection that we have is to our local client. Let's add our servers. Click add. And now you can specify what you want to add, what connection type. We want servers. And now you can import your servers. The easiest way for us is to search Active Directory. So we search for lab DC and star to get both servers. Select both of them and click add. And in this moment we are managing two servers which also are the only ones that we have. Let's click on one of them. And it will connect. I'm currently connected with the domain administrator on this computer. It's important to make sure that you are connected with a user that has access. Otherwise you won't be able to manage the servers. And this is the overview page of a managed server. You can see that you get uh, already a lot of information about this server, hardware and software information. You get some statistics like the CPU usage, the memory usage which is a little high, a network usage, and uh, you have also some controls. Restart, shutdown, disk metrics which we will not enable and so on. And of course you have a refresh button if the refresh is not uh, fast enough for you. Beneath the overview tab you have the rest of the tools that are available with admin center and there are some uh, interesting ones in my opinion. Devices is something that uh, is uh, 
is not groundbreaking but very interesting because until now to manage devices remotely was really not so easy with the MMC console. But now you can see it's very nice, very quick. I like it. <laughs> this is the only thing I can say. You can see events, which we saw also in uh, Server Manager and with PowerShell. It will take a little to load them because it has to go to the server and take all the events. And you see we already have uh, the list. Let's say we want to see system events. And here they are. All the 10,000 and a little more events. You can of course filter events like uh, we saw also in Server Manager. Let's say we want only critical error and warning. And we want only for today. And of course the server is running fine. But we have some application errors. Another cool thing is you can manage files. So this is really nice. You can actually manage the file system remotely. As you can see. In more you get the normal right click options or some of them. And you have a firewall installed apps, local users and groups, network, you have a PowerShell console, you can manage the registry, and you have remote desktop. But for this to work, you actually do need to have remote desktop enabled on your server. So check it out. We clicked on remote desktop. Now it's connecting. And shortly we should see the server's uh, remote connection. So we have the options here. I don't want to be asked again. Connect. Of course I have to provide a password like uh, I would connect with MSTSC. And here we are, connected through the browser with remote desktop. We can also manage roles and features, but after what I showed you, I guess this isn't as interesting anymore. And here we are, we have a list of all the roles and features that are installed or that we can install. And let's say that we want again the Telnet client. Just select it. Click install. Now it's uh, calculating the dependencies which we do not have. And click yes, it will start installing as you can see from uh, this uh, notification. Done. Feature was installed. One other thing that uh, might be interesting, you also have a PowerShell console integrated in the admin center. In case you need it, I don't know. 
I usually use PowerShell Remoting. And here we are, we are connected to the DC1 server. And uh, here is the host name. So that was a very quick look at Windows Admin Center. I think it's very cool. You can do a lot of things with it and it really relieves you of opening 1 million consoles just to do some basic stuff. Unfortunately, as you can see, we, we don't have uh, DNS tools, DHCP tools, Active Directory tools, so it's not 100% baked yet, but it's still okay from my side. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you found the video at least a little useful, please like, share and subscribe. It would help me a lot. Thank you again and see you in the next one.